Welcome to Lacrosse Classified on the Lax All Stars Podcast Network, presented by Extreme Threads. Your home for the latest news from the National Lacrosse League and Indoor Lacrosse. Now, let's talk some lacrosse with your hosts, Jake Elliott and Evan Schemenauer. All right, lacrosse fans, you heard the man. Time for Lax Class. And welcome back once again here to Extreme Threats Lacrosse Classified here on the Lacrosse All Stars Podcast Network. Jake Elliott, Evan Schemenauer with you once again. And week 14 has now come and gone. Week 15 on the horizon, the National Lacrosse League. I don't know where this season is going, Evan Schemenauer. Week 15 in the NLL already. This is episode 19 of Lacrosse Classified. Man, like it's just flying by, and I'm not sure I like it. Well, I mean, we've got some great races going on. That's the thing. You have three teams in a massive battle for first in the East, a West where San Diego, the first place San Diego Seals, let's say that again, right? The first place San Diego Seals. Nobody's, nobody could have possibly projected that. Even Steve Govett could have projected that. But, uh, you know, you got Saskatchewan, you got Calgary still in a tight race, and Vancouver and Colorado. The, there's nobody that's even close to clinching a playoff spot, and nobody that's out of it. You got to love that kind of, you know, that kind of situation. It's it's almost like the script has flipped from last year, where the East, like you just, it came down to the final day on who was going to make the playoffs, who was going to finish in first. Nobody knew. Now in the East, you got Georgia and Buffalo have already clinched a playoff spot. Toronto's right there about to do the same. But in the West, it is so wide open that it is ridiculous. You don't know who's going to be the fourth place team. You got to think San Diego, Saskatchewan, and Calgary are going to be in. Uh, but uh, Saskatchewan and San Diego still have two games against each other. The Rush and Roughnecks still play another time. Um, I'm sure the Roughnecks and, and Seals still go at it one more time as well. So it, it the West is going to be wide open kind of right down the stretch here. So that's going to make for an interesting back half wow. of the, the season here. And, and, you know, speaking of predicting, one person has been a little bit better at predicting over the last couple of weeks uh, than the other. And that would be you as you went five and one on Thank the weekend. I went you. three and three. Um, so at least I wasn't below five hundred, but I do lose more ground to you in uh, who you got as you are now four clear games ahead of me in the standings here, and uh, it's going to be a tough road to hoe here if uh, if I want to make a comeback. I've, I've considered... You're, you're. I've No, hang on, Evan. I've considered here maybe just uh, going with the coin like you did a couple of years ago the rest of the way. I've also entertained the idea of just picking the complete opposite of you to either just bury my even more or complete the comeback in a very quick manner because I just think like if we continue to pick the same teams and maybe I pick one different than you uh, each week I'm just going to run out of time I'm not going to be able to to get back into it so I don't think it matters whether I lose by one or lose by ten I said this was completely uh, in the realm of possibility that I had a really good first half I could completely blow it in the second half that seems to be the way things are going uh, so far that way as you continue to click along here. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to well, do. All I know is that I'm hosting Stampede Tax, who you got this week, and uh, we'll, we'll find out when we get to that. But we got to get to Stampede yeah. Tax, who well, we had. What, Evan? But before we get there, you, this is a complete shock to you. I haven't even told you about this. I was actually in touch with the guys from Stampede Tax. Oh, and because you are actually losing so badly now, then we're starting to get to the point where you probably are going to be putting on that cowboy outfit. Mm. They're actually putting up a prize now. Oh, is that yeah. so, so, well, I'll have to reach out, out to Kevin there, and thank him for that. <laughs> for the fans out there, if you want some Blundstone merchandise, he's putting up a piece of Blundstone merchandise. What oh. you got to do is find your favorite photo of Jake and Photoshop what he's going to look like in his cowboy gear at the end of the year. 
man. I, you know, like honestly, I think people would much rather prefer to see me in a in a full Western getup than they than they would you, Evan. I don't know why that is, but I just kind of feel like that's what the fans really want to see anyway. So I may be doing them a favor, but uh, thanks to Kevin Michael Winkler and the family there at Stampede Tack and Western Wear, who have now upped the ante a little bit uh, for the fan. So let me get this straight: the fan who comes up with the best photoshopped picture of me wearing a cowboy outfit is going to receive a Blundstone, uh, some sort of Blundstone gift. That's right. Okay, well, there you go, folks. Uh, you heard it here on Extreme Threads Lacrosse Classified. Photoshop me wearing a cowboy outfit, and you could win yourself a Blundstone prize. Pretty simple. Uh, thanks to our friends at Stampede Tack and Western, where they are your complete source Four boots, including Blundstones, Cowboys, their CSA-approved boots. They ship Canada-wide, located in lovely Cloverdale. It is a screamer of a day here, Evan. Uh, shorts and t-shirt weather here on the west coast of British Columbia here today. Located in Cloverdale since 1967, online at stampede.ca. Shopping online is still shopping local. Okay, here we go. Who we had, as I mentioned, you went 5-1, and one, I went 3-3, three and three, but let's recap week 14 in the National... Evan, you did it again! Our guest this week <laughs> here on Lacrosse Classified, we will well, be... I was able to get more than three words in it. <laughs> I'm on a roll right now. I'm on a roll. On the show this week, we got a good one lined up. From the Georgia Swarm, number 83 in your program, Randy Stotts will join us. Or Ronnie, if you're talking to Shane Jackson. Uh, Randy Stotts will join us. And then from the Rochester Nighthawks, put up seven goals in his debut with the Cahawks. Chris Bushy. Will join us here on Lacrosse Classified a little later on. Um, so that first game, that's what reminded me because both our guests played in this game, Evan Schemenauer. It was Georgia at Rochester, and Georgia jumps out to a big lead in this one. They still led by, I think, five at halftime. Babushi puts up seven goals, two assists, keeps his Nighthawks in it. Withers goes ham in the faceoff dot, but it's not enough. As Georgia hangs on 15-14, we thought Ryan Banesh tied this game late but gets called back on a goal review first to touch the ball through the crease. They wipe it out. Georgia hangs on 15-14, your final. Here's an interesting thing. If you had to pick a three stars this week, you'd probably pick two of them from Rochester, and they lost both games. How absolutely stunning is that? But this performance by Chris Bush, you, you've got to, if you didn't watch it, please go watch the replay because I'm sitting there watching this game. It's like, Oh, he got one. Oh, he got another one. I'm like, Oh my God. Like what's going on with this kid, right? He had a hat trick in the opening quarter. He had four by halftime. You're just like, how hard is he going to get when he got the seven? It's like this kid's just insane. And he, they, here's the thing I, I went back to. It said that he's got seven goals in this game. The fourth round pick that he was traded for, most fourth round picks don't score seven in their entire NLL career. Yeah. So you know, I was disappointed years, two years ago, when he couldn't get a roster spot in Saskatchewan. He's found a heck of a home now, and he's going. He's going to go places. Um, he, and of course, Jake Withers. He was twenty one for twenty one in the opening half, <laughs> twenty nine of thirty two. He was one face off win away from the all time record. I actually tweeted something out. It was just after halftime that oh, Georgia finally won a face off because Withers was in the penalty box. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. But, what, is it know, Jeff Schneider that owns the 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 all time record, or is it Thor? Yeah. yeah, it's Schneider. And you also had a love that you know that Shane. Jack- and drops the mitts. Yeah. And, you know, he, uh, that was actually a decent fight. And then Rochester managed to put five guys in the penalty box in the next couple of minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Was. I saw that. That doesn't beat the record, though, of uh, when I was calling the 2014 President's Cup in Coquitlam. Aqua Sosny, they had seven in the box. I posted up a picture on Facebook of that if you want to see it. Seven guys in the box at one time. It was quite the, the spectacle. But you normally don't see five in the box in a National Lacrosse League game. And uh, you normally don't see Shane Jackson drop the mitts either. But he did quite well. Uh, we'll talk to Randy Stotts about that coming up 
for sure. Uh, we mentioned Rochester played twice this weekend, and they were first up on Saturday as well as they go from home. They go to Toronto, the Rocks sporting their St. Paddy's Day uniforms. Uh, quite sharp, I must say. And this one was kind of a, it was a tight game the whole way through. Nobody really had a big performance. It was a well-balanced attack. Uh, but once again, Rochester, tough weekend for them. Uh, two really good opponents, and they're right in there for both games. But uh, they dropped this one to the Rock 15-13. A game that was yeah, just back and forth, back and forth. Toronto gets up two, Rochester gets one back. Toronto goes up two, Rochester gets one back. Bushy gets another two. <laughs> two may not sound uh, particularly great against a seven, but you know, the kid's a rookie. And Nine goals in two games sounds forth. pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and once again, Jake Withers. Now he's, this time he's facing Jay Thornburg, who is one of the best face-off artists of all time. And he wins 22 to 33. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, what the heck's going on? I thought Rochester was going to come into this week and get absolutely throttled. Uh, you know, when they, you, you traded away a 30 year team. A whole bunch of guys, you know, they, they signed Triolo right. just before the game Friday night. Well, there's but, some you know, there's something to be said, Evan, for guys that, you know, have been chomping at the bit, waiting for an opportunity. And finally getting one and being so motivated that the nerves probably go right out the window and they just want to go out and prove everybody wrong. Like, hey, you should have taken a chance on me and look at what I can do sort of thing. And and I think there's something to that with Rochester because all these guys that are getting chances really haven't had legit shots. And now, probably through the remainder of this year, they're, they're going to get a real look and... Um, sometimes that can that can carry a long way. Unfortunately, it didn't uh, carry them into the win column, but you know they showed very well uh, against Georgia and Toronto, two very good teams right at the top of the Eastern standings, and and Rochester not that far off. Um, he, we both had Toronto, we both had uh, Georgia in that game, so we were both two for two. I was feeling pretty good starting out. Uh, on the weekend, the first of two, two for two out of the first six games here. Uh, Game number three, things kind of took a turn for the worse here for old Jumbo. Um, and yourself, for that matter, I think. Uh, we both had Calgary in this game, but that was not the case. Uh, they sit noble once again. I don't think the Roughnecks really ever had it in this game. Uh, Kyle Killen continues to impress. Maybe had one of the goals of the weekend, uh, a laser over the shoulder from well out. And Colorado wins how Colorado is going to win games this season. They keep their opponent under 10. They score just over 10. Uh, main thing here for the Mammoth is they get the win 11-9 over the Roughnecks. What a critical win it is. And I was watching this game in small bits and pieces while I was doing the broadcast up in uh, up the SAS Tell Center because we were looking for the out-of-town scoreboard. Calgary's up 5-1 right away. And like, okay, you know, it's Colorado, what do you expect? Here's what's going to happen. But then they rifle off the next five. Uh, you know, Calgary, yeah, definitely just did not have it. But a critical win for Colorado, and here's why. They got a double header against Vancouver this weekend. Now, if there's a split, okay, it's still even. If Colorado can sweep that two-game series, they'd probably lock up that fourth spot because not only are they two games ahead of Vancouver they'd have the tie break well the other thing is is that uh Vancouver was able to to get it done this weekend which we'll talk about here in mere moments as well on Stampede Tax who we had uh next game up though and we both had differentiating picks in this one uh Buffalo at Saskatchewan you were on radio side with uh, our main man John Gertler I was uh, just next door to you with my main man, Ryan Flaherty, on uh, St. Patty's Day Eve. And another 13,000-plus at Sastel Center. They got their money's worth in this one, Evan Scheminauer. My goodness, what a lacrosse game. 5-5 five, five at halftime. This thing goes to overtime. It featured an a unfortunate injury to Evan Kirk, who has to come out of this game early in the third quarter. Buffalo goes on like a four-goal run in that third quarter to lead at 9-5. Uh, Rush get a late one in the third to cut it to three and then go on a 5-2 run in the fourth quarter. Courtesy of Mark Matthews, who was absolutely slinging darts in that fourth quarter. My goodness, was he picking corners. 
Rush tie it up at 11. Well, they actually took the lead 11-10 before Evans ties it late at 11 to send it to overtime uh, before Chase Fraser, for the second time this year for his Buffalo Bandits, gets the overtime winner on a, well, I wouldn't have to call what a fortunate bounce. Shoot kind of turns the wrong way as the ball goes wide of the goal. Fraser picks it up on the back of the net and dunks it uh, for the 12-11 Overtime victory for the Buffalo Bandits, and and you're talking about picking three stars. I don't know who was picking the three stars in Saskatchewan on Saturday night. Yeah, but to not put Matt Vince in the three stars whatsoever when he should have been probably the first three stars exactly. himself. Um, what yeah. a game from Matt Vince! He is the only reason I can really say that Buffalo was even in this game because I I honestly felt like Saskatchewan. Outplayed the heck out of them, but if not for Matt Vince, uh, they, they're they not in this game, but they win it 12-11 in what had to be the game of the week. No, Matt Vince was the absolute show in that one. I was talking with John Tavares after the game, and he was terribly disappointed in the Bandits' performance. <laughs> Is what over words? Vince bailed us out of this one. and you know, But, I mean, fabulous game to watch. Everybody was on pins and needles. The big thing for the rush, Evan Kirk getting the injury. He's going to have an MRI. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to go. So you could expect the rush are going to go and try and get a third goaltender or something. You know, there's a few options that are out there. Pete Davinsky, who's been on their practice roster, probably the, the favorite. Uh, one thing that just irritates me, and those that – have read my columns for a year. No, I'm not a fan of Jeremy Thompson, but what the hell? <laughs> like literally, yeah. he takes a flashing penalty at half, you know, far away from the ball. Then he takes a holding the stick penalty while the ball's on the other end of the floor in transition. Then he gets into this uh, scuffle with Nick Weiss and, you know, the rush are actually going to get a two minute power play out of this. Then he keeps chirping to Garrison, takes the power play away. Plus yeah. about three or four shots that just were not good shots. Yeah. They, yeah. No, I don't know what's up with them. Like, well, geez, but it's, if you're right, Evan, there was some very questionable decision-making uh, from one Jeremy Thompson in that game. And, I'm sure the the coaching staff um, has addressed it, and if they haven't, I'm sure they will. And and sometimes with Jeremy Thompson, you got to take a little bit of good with a little bit of bad, and there was more bad than good from Jeremy Thompson on Saturday night. There's no question about it, and and I'm sure you know Jarris is, is aware of it, and he knows it. He's got to be better, uh, and everybody really is going to have to be better moving forward here, Evan. I mean, I think they played a good game, but now. Without Evan Kirk, Adam Shute knows he's going to be the guy here for at least this coming weekend against San Diego and what has really going to become a crucial game here. Um, and, you know, like Adam Shute, I, he got the win in Vancouver, and he was okay. I think coming into this game, there's probably two goals that he would like to have back, uh, the five-hole goal against Durston and the one against McKay as well. But... I think he, he really made that save of the year after afterwards. Yeah, I mean he really he really gave his team a chance to win and I think coming into the situation that he came in where it was like you know, as a backup goaltender you can kind of see a game start to go sideways and think to yourself, All right, I'm probably gonna get the tap here and have to go in in relief. Um, but that wasn't the case. It was all of a sudden Kirk was down and it was like, Shoot, you're in and by the way, it's a tie game and you're gonna face a power play right off the get go against the best team in the National Lacrosse League and I think he handled himself quite well, and I think the boys in front of him, they upped their game another notch when he came in, and they're probably going to have to do that with him in there. Um, but I think he can take a lot of, a lot of, a lot of positives away from that performance and, and know that he's going to be the guy going forward here. And this is a real big opportunity for Adam Shute to, to really kind of prove to the, himself and the rest of the league that he, he can be a number one guy in the this league, but that was a heck of a game. 12-11 the score. You took Buffalo, uh, traitor. Um, <laughs> well, going and, and against you uh, your hometown you're, team here. You're like a quarter inch of the crossbar away from winning, from getting that game because, you know, was it Ben McIntosh's bouncer there in overtime? Oh, man. Literally down off the shoulder, off the crossbar. Yeah. Well, you think of that run, out. you think of that run from Mike Messenger near the end of regulation, too, where he just like shivered off Dean Smith in full flight and 
uh, somehow Vino reaches out with a, a paw and just you know steers one aside. The, the place would have went absolutely bonkers uh, if the Rush were able to win that game after coming da- back from 9-5. Um, so, you know, I, I think Saskatchewan knows uh, they can beat that team and, and unfortunately it doesn't show up in the win column for them. But, um, you know, it's tough to be disappointed after that one. Uh, we got to move on here and who we had, Evan. And next game up, just two left, Philadelphia at San Diego. We both had the Seals in this one, and the Seals do prevail. Kind of the same old thing here for Philadelphia, Evan. Uh, a fourth quarter lead after it looked like they were kind of down and out. All of a sudden, they lead the game 10-7, and then like in a four-minute span... It starts with a power play goal for San Diego. They go on to score six goals in like four minutes and just kind of rip this game away from the hands of the Wings. 13-11 as Dan Dawson puts up a five-goal effort. Uh, what can you say? San Diego in first place. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I guess you take the win when you can get it, right? Uh, but Philly, same old story, can't play 60 minutes. When they're up 10-7, you think it's over. With five minutes to go, you're up three. That should be enough to win the game. Uh, one crazy bounce of one of those goals. I don't know if you saw that one. <laughs> I did literally. No, I didn't. No, it's shoulder five feet up and then in behind the net. Like a crazy, crazy bounce. But uh, what can you say? Philly is literally, if they could play a 60-minute game, they are an 8-4 and four team right now. Yeah, and they can't do it. And well, like five hundred at worst, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, there, yeah, there's like a handful, at least five games they've left on the table that could easily be wins for that yeah. team. And and I don't know, you know, man, like I don't know if it is physical, whether it is mental, whether it is coaching, goaltending, what is going on there? But uh, nobody can be happy in Philadelphia with the way this season has gone. I mean, I know they're an expansion team. But so is San Diego. They're in first place right now, and they both had the same rules kind of coming into this thing. Philadelphia has just not managed to find a way to get it done, and they find themselves way down the standings where the Seals are way up. Uh, so it's it's been unfortunate because I think Philadelphia is just a way better team than their record indicates, but at the end of the day, you're, you are what your record says you are, and, and it's not good for the Wings. That's the bottom line. So, at this point, we are both, uh, well, you got one pick extra right than I did with one game to go here, and we both had differentiating picks in this one, and I decided I was just going to pick the opposite of you. Uh, We still hadn't heard the news on Callum Crawford, and I don't know if we should even get into this. I suppose we kind of have to, but... The arbitrator ruling that the one you you explain this because you're way better at it, but I I find this to be completely ridiculous, quite frankly. Well, assuming nothing's come out on Twitter, I've had a day where I have to get off Twitter, so nothing's come out today. I'm assuming, but uh, so they had the arbitration hearing Friday morning. What took them this long? I don't know. Like, why can't they camp this league? Well, there were t- this, this is just this is two weeks. We're into two, in two weeks now, right? Like this this. Egregious, uh happened three weeks ago. It happened. Yeah, three now. Weeks ago. Okay, so even longer. Yeah. So I mean, dish out the punishment Monday. There's not that many incidents to review. Players Association appeals on Tuesday. Thursday, you got a, a you know a, a hearing. You know, quit this situation where guys can shop for whichever game they want to sit. But yeah, Friday morning, this thing finally gets heard. Um, a number of arguments laid out by the PLPA. But what the arbitrator did was he said, okay, first off, I'm ruling on the match penalty. It's a match penalty. You're going to sit the one game you got for the match penalty, so you're not playing Saturday night. At least that didn't give a you know, disadvantage to the Warriors because you know, they were kind of looking forward to that game where they weren't going to face him. But the five-game suspension for the repeat offender hasn't been ruled on yet. And I'm not sure where the arbitrator's going here because there's already a precedent set. Ray Hartett got the repeat offender. He got the games. The rule's pretty clear. You've ruled it's a match. You know it's twice in a row. The only argument the Players Association has is that 41-4 is too harsh. 
Yeah, it's and, already been ruled on. And they're almost like, looking for get it over with. they're almost looking for some <laughs> sort of loophole to to sneak through to allow Crawford to either to rescind the match or the match wasn't delivered properly or it wasn't written up properly or they couldn't get the I, I just feel like they're looking for some sort of to stay off the the ruling on this for another whatever it's gonna be, four or five days. Like do you really need that kind of time to make the guy, if you look at, I'm going to get worked up here. If you look at his two match penalties, they're almost identical. Where he blindside hits, leaves his feet, contact with the head. And now it almost seems like they, they want to try and change the rule in the middle of the season to try and find a way to limit his suspension. And it's just like you're making a mockery of it and you you're going to send a way better message to the rest of the league all your players coaches managers fans everybody if you I'm sorry Callum Crawford again like I like the guy and I don't think he's a you know a notoriously dirty player that goes out looking to hurt guy, but he did something really stupid twice and now you want to find a loophole, and you're gonna like you're you you make a way better example to everybody if you if you make an example out of Crawford to not this isn't acceptable, don't do it, or this is gonna happen no matter who you are. And, and it's not, and the thing you're leaving out is not only does he make contact with the head, it's he's swinging his elbow up to make contact with the head. How much more evidence do you need that this needs to stop? I d- I now, don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. It. Apparently, apparently more. Apparently, you need more because this guy couldn't make a ruling uh, on Friday and needs some more time to figure it out. And I just I really hope they don't go down this road, Evan, because the public outcry and the media backlash is going to be monumental if uh, if they find a way to skirt around this and let him off the hook. And, and again, I'm sorry, Callum, but you did something stupid twice and you need to serve the time. You just do. Um, so with all that being said, Vancouver on home floor goes out and they beat those New England Black Wolves 12-9 the final on the strength of six points from Mitch Jones and Eric Penny, who is leading the National Lacrosse League in goals against Evan Schemenauer. I I know Aaron Bold was their big free agent signee. I know Boldy's going through a lot of stuff right now. But I think Eric Penny has clearly established himself as Vancouver's number one goaltender here, and it's no fluke what he's doing. It, it like this isn't just an anomaly. Now he's doing this consistently, keeping teams under ten goals. He's got his goals against average is nine six nine. To compare this, Vince is ten point six one, Christian Del Bianco ten point nine two. And now he's also on his second, or sorry, third in save percentage at 792, and literally he's a couple one thousandths of a point behind the other two guys. Absolutely stunning what this guy is pulling off. Um, and you got to go with the hot hand. You just simply do. There's no way around it. Uh, and I really, you know, I couldn't be happier for Eric Penny, who has gone through the rigors of being a third string guy to being a backup to being thrust into a starting position before he was ready to going back to being a backup to going back to being a third string guy to now becoming a backup to a starter again like he's literally gone through the entire gamut twice where he's he's gone from practice roster to backup to starter starter to backup to practice roster and then back again but I really think this time around here for Eric Penny, he started to figure it out. He's becoming into that age group where goaltenders kind of find their niche a little bit. And I really think, from all accounts, Dwight Mecki with the Warriors has had a real impact on Eric Penny's game. And I couldn't be happier for a guy who has just stuck with it uh, through all of it and now is reaping the rewards and having some success. It's, it's great to see Eric Penny um, have that. So... Evan, with all that being said, again, I go three and three, <laughs> you go five and one. Give us uh, oh, nice. the updated overall standings in Stampede Tax. Who you got? I'm forty six and twenty one. How about that? <laughs> you are forty two and twenty five. 
So there's quite a bit of distance. Your lucky thing is four there's games, a lot of games that could go either way this week. Four games uh, back. You might have a chance to catch up. Four games back. It's not uh, It's not over yet. But like I said, I may have to just go with the coin flip here or just completely pick the opposite of what you do. And who knows? I could make it up in, in one week uh, if we know the National Lacrosse League. Like we do. What do we got? We got one, two, three, four, five, six weeks left here in the NLL season for me to to make a comeback. Just four well, games, so there's not a. It's big, but it's not it's not insurmountable here. Well, let's clarify something up front. Are we doing the playoffs or no? Ooh, uh, I think we got to. I think we got to go regular season here. I think maybe we do something different for the playoffs. Okay. I think we cut it off at the regular season, and then and then we do something different for the playoffs. I think that's uh, maybe we'll up the ante a little bit for playoff time, since there's a little more on the line for the teams. Maybe we'll put something a little more on the line uh, for who you got. So once again, you lead it by four. That was who we had. Now we got to take a break because on the other side we got Rondi Stotts coming up from the Georgia Swarm. Right here on Extreme Threads Lacrosse, classified on the Lacrosse All Stars Podcast Network. Pure Vita Labs is proud to bring you the highest quality sports supplements on the market. PVL products are 100% all natural with no artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners. And the entire line is also Informed Choice certified. We designed all our products with the athlete in mind. We look forward to being a part of your athletic achievements, helping you push the bar higher, win at the highest levels, and set personal records for years to come. Hey, this is Sean Rogers, the captain of the Toronto Rock, and you're listening to Lacrosse Classified on Lax All Star Podcast Network. All right, welcome back to Lacrosse Classified, presented by Extreme Threads, right here on Lacrosse All Stars, growing the game one podcast at a time. Big thanks to our friends at Pure Vital Labs. As always, anything else would be unsportsmanlike, so make sure you're using. The fine all natural products at PVL. Find them at PVL.com. Now joining us on the podcast, he is a member of the Georgia Swarm. He's the former rookie of the year in the National Lacrosse League as well, and an NLL champion to go along with it. Out of the Syracuse Orangeman University, it's Randy Stotts. Randy, thanks for joining us. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Our pleasure, man. Thanks for making time to do this. Uh, let's start here. I got your number from uh, from Shaner. Shane Jackson uh, hooked me up with that. So if you want to get mad at somebody for, for giving out your number, that's the guy. But uh, he sent me your contact, and he's got you in his phone yeah. under Ronnie Stotts. I don't know if you knew that or not, Randy, but he's got you under Ronnie. Do you want to tell us the story behind this? Yeah, um, him and uh, Mark Matthews, I don't know what. Like, it was Rondell, then it was uh, Ronnie. I don't know, they kind of just mix it up. And um, for the past couple of years, it's, <laughs> it's either Ronnie or Rondell. So One thing transformed. That's how about, me, but, uh, no, well, speaking of Shane Jackson, how about your boy Shane Jackson there last week, Randy? Uh, puts up a nine spot as far as points goes, but... Apparently he wants to be known as Knuckles Jackson now as he dropped the mitts uh, with Robinson. Didn't do too bad there. Yeah, I started calling him nails. Uh, <laughs> but, no, he, he played really well. I mean, he answered the bell there um, in the corner, and uh, he, he got his mitts off, and <laughs> he uh, he did well for himself. Um, like you said, he had nine points, and he, he helped us uh, to a big victory over Raj. Well, give me your breakdown of the game. Odd game here where you get up – Five nothing in the first five minutes on a, on a team that you know is rebuilding. You don't really know who's all there, how they're going to mesh. You know, you re- probably don't have any game tape really to deal with because everybody's in a brand new position, and all of a sudden they come storming back and uh, gave everybody a bit of a heart attack. Yeah, that was one of the big things uh, going into the game was that we couldn't really scout them too much. We knew uh, that they had a lot of trades, a lot of new guys coming in, like you said, and. Um, yeah, we got off to a hot start, um, up five, nothing. And then I, I don't know what it was going into half. Um, but we were up by a good margin and then, um, the third quarter rolled around and I think it was 12, seven, um, something like that. And then they, uh, kept clawing back, clawing back and made it a very interesting game. I, I think it was tied. They went up, um, it was 
back and forth battle. Um, I think on our part, uh, we lost our focus um, offensively. I think we didn't uh, put up what we were doing in the in the first half there. Um, but I think just as a group too, we uh, kind of sat back and, and and you know lost focus. Um, but luckily and thankfully, we uh, stuck it out and um, grinded out that win. Well, and every win right now, Randy, is is ultra important just to try and kind of keep pace with the Bandits and, and stay there with the Rock as well. And, I mean, is maybe, is maybe that game, I know it's against Rochester, and they're going to miss the playoffs, and, you know, they're still a National Lacrosse League team, and, and you, you still have to maintain your focus, like you said, through 60 minutes no matter who you play. And is that maybe a bit of a learning lesson for you guys that it doesn't really matter who, who your opponent is, you need to come and, and play your best game yeah. if you want to win? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, we weren't going to take Rochester lightly. Uh, their offense can go off at any time, and during that game, obviously, it showed. Um, just like you said, any team in this league isn't going to give up or, or, or roll over for anybody. Um, so, I, I think we knew this, but we sometimes um, just lose the focus, and um, you have to regain it. But um, yeah, definitely a, a valuable lesson learned um, there, and. Um, we got a big match Friday against uh, the Tron Rock. One of the things that had to have been frustrating as well, um, Jake Withers going 29 for 32. You know, it must have been frustrating because you get a goal and you don't get possession almost every time. So there's really no way to kind of build that momentum to you know keep keep the ball going in the back of the net. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a little different. Um, Sometimes I guess we like I guess we got used to it. Um, uh, where there's uh, winning winning the draw, but at the same time, right? They only get thirty seconds, um, so it's not like field lacrosse where you're waiting two or three minutes, four minutes, and, and you get out of your your uh, your zone. Um, you only got to wait thirty seconds, and you can kind of get back into it. But um, it's not as, as bad as you think um, if you're expecting it, you know. Um, but yeah, he he definitely uh, he definitely did well against us. Speaking with Georgia Swarms, Randy Stotts and and Randy, you know the pieces there in Georgia, that the core of the offense still there, obviously with Lyle and Miles and yourself, but uh, and Shane Jackson as well. But some some new pieces in there with the departure of Kyle Matisse and and Jordan Hall, as you got Holden Katoni in there now for Jesse King and and Zeddy Williams uh, playing a bigger role uh, up front this year. Where do you where do you stack this team up with with where you guys you know a team that won the championship a couple of years ago? Do you think the Swarm have it in them to to make another run to the finals? Uh yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't be you know I don't think any of us would be going as hard as we go during the week and. and and playing as hard as we play on the weekend if we didn't think that, right? Yeah, well, maybe um, just compare the two, compare, Randy. Like, just compare the two offenses yeah, from the championship the here. Teams, um, looking back at it because it's two totally different teams. You know what I mean? Um, there's some similarities of, of the chemistry on the offense. Like you said, um, same thing in the, in the back end. We kind of have a similar defense to what we had in 2017. Um, but I think losing those key, key players, I think we also returned good players in Holden and Zed stepping up into a bigger role. Um, and I think it's tough to compare, honestly, but I think we do have the team to um, make a push for a championship. You have a playoff spot locked in now, but you know, you're one game behind the bandits, just a half game ahead of the rock. First place has to be almost on the radar, you know, for you guys, because every team in the East seems to be so dominant at home this year. I believe it's 21 and five. Now the home records. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. Uh, I think, well, for us anyways, uh, with the Swarm, our, our kind of motto is that we, we shouldn't lose at home. Um, you know what I mean? So if we win, if we go 9-0 and at home, that's, you know, that, that's that's great. Obviously, that's not the case for us, but that that's uh, one of our goals in, in the beginning of the year is not to lose at home. And um, I imagine other teams want to protect their, their house too, and, and um, that's probably their goal. Well, uh, but yeah, I, I think uh, I think that's a, a big thing. It's like 
Yeah, talk talk about the hive down there, Randy, because it's it's been a while for the swarm now since they've been in Georgia, and, and we had Shane Jackson on, uh, you know, probably a couple of months ago now. But just the general scene down in Georgia, Atlanta, Gwinnett County, the surrounding area there where you guys play, is it growing? Do you feel the fan base is engaged with the swarm? Do you think it's it's going to last a long time there? Is it getting better? And and I mean. You guys got a real fun team to watch there. It's just a matter of getting people in the building once to, to come and see it, and, and you think they'll be back again. Yeah, I think uh, over my four years being here, um, it's gradually gotten better. Um, I think over the last three years, it's been pretty steady. Not too many people, just kind of the same amount of people every game. But the past this past year, I've, I've definitely seen an increase in attendance. I think we had our biggest crowd since our opening um, yeah, right. game was our last time our last home game, I think it was 8,500 or something. Um, so the hive was buzzing. It was, it was great. Yeah. I definitely see a, an increase in people coming to watch, um, which is great to see. Um, it's good for the lacrosse field and box, both, uh, in the Atlanta area. Of course, we got to ask you the question about your younger brother, Austin. What are your thoughts on the <laughs> season so far? And you two must have gone one-on-one by now. Who wins the battle when you go head to head? I mean, that's, that's a tough question. I'm going to say me, <laughs> obviously, but if I have to cover him, I think I'm in. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely in some trouble. He might run me over. But uh, as far as his playing, he's been playing great. I think uh, busting on the scene here, he had a couple of hot games, and he, he's still been playing well. And he, he's he's a big boy, right? So he gets. Um, he gets to the middle pretty good. He's got a good shot, um, good vision. I think uh, I think they're first in the West. So I think he's been a, a pretty big part of that. Him and Dawson and, and Billings um, been definitely doing a good job over there. Speaking with Randy Stutz, what do you think the keys to success are for you guys to have a good run in the playoffs? Consistency. Um, I think, like I, like I talked about it, earlier about the Rochester game we were very good in the in the first half not so good in the third quarter then we got better in the fourth quarter um that's just inconsistencies um that could bite us in the playoff run um so I think for us as a group being consistent at the face off being consistent in transition getting on getting off the floor uh being consistent up and down the floor offense defense um I think that's the biggest key for us and I think um, we'll be focusing on that a great deal on the upcoming games. Growing up uh, in Six Nations, I, I, I read that Cody Jamison is actually your cousin. Is that correct? Yeah, he is. He's my second cousin. Okay. Um, um, so just growing growing yeah. up in Six Nations, where obviously lacrosse is is number one, and and you know a lot of great players have come out of that area. Randy, is there guy a couple of guys maybe that you looked up to while you're growing up that you wanted to try and model your game after? Oh uh, yeah, man. I think we just talked about him, Cody Jameson. Uh, he was playing for the Arrows, and uh, I definitely wanted to model my game around him. There's a couple other guys, Delby Paulus, uh, Brett Bucktooth. Um, watching those guys as a native kid growing up, you know, you kind of want to go to college and, and do what they do, um, and, and stuff like that. Of course, come in September, out at the Langley Event Center, you're going to get the chance again to represent the Iroquois Nationals. Uh, how big is that tournament to you, and what do you got to do to finally get past Canada? Oh, man, yeah. That's, uh, that's in the back of the mind right now, but it's definitely around the corner. Um, but I think there's, that's a big question. Um, getting past Canada involves a lot of things. Um, both on and off the floor, you know, um, practicing, um, getting chemistry with guys and all that stuff, and then executing it on the floor. But I think with that, I think we're right there. I mean, 2015 in Syracuse, I think we lost by two in the gold medal game, and, and that was uh, that was a pretty pretty good mark for us, you know what I mean? Um, but I think with more Native players, uh, playing defense in the NLL, playing transition, um, rather than just being offensive minded, I think that's where um, the difference is now. Uh, I think the Iroquois team was more offensive powered 
in previous years, but now I think we have a, a steady balance of, of good defenders, um, good goalies, and a solid transition game to keep up with Canada. And I think that's what our biggest, where they beat us um, in all the rest of the years, I guess. Um, so I think just being able to stick with, uh, with their, their offense um, – is a huge uh, thing for us. Yeah, well, Randy, you know, talking with with Schatz, Jeff Shatler, and Lyle, um, the, you know, both those guys saying yep. like this is going to be the best team that you guys have ever had at the Worlds, and you know, you guys have kind of started to get together a little bit earlier than you normally do, and and tryouts were a little bit tougher than they normally mm-hmm. are. So uh, I'm going to be there front and center in Langley in September, and I can't wait to to see the Nationals get after it. And uh, always enjoy watching you play, man. Best of luck with with the Swarm the rest of the year, and uh, thanks for catching up with us here on Lacrosse Classified. Awesome, guys. Thanks for having me. My pleasure, our pleasure, and I'm sure the listeners' pleasure as well. That was Randy Stotts of the Georgia Swarm, also plays for the Six Nations Chiefs in the summer out of Syracuse, and uh, one of the best righties in the league, Evan Schemenauer. The boy can ball now. Yeah, I mean, you got one of the most, probably the most lethal right side in the entire game there with him and the two Thompsons. And you know, when you, when a guy like Kyle Matisse is the guy that you don't protect, you just understand how good he is, uh, you know, ahead of everybody else. Yeah. And I don't know if they projected Zed Williams to take the step forward that he has taken offensively this year, but, uh, he's been, been a nice fit with with Lyle and Miles and Randy over on that right side uh, for the Swarm, uh, for sure. All right, that was a good one. Uh, we got to take a quick break here on Extreme Threads Lacrosse Classified. We have the new, young, kind of phenom of the National Lacrosse League. Put up seven goals last weekend in one game and then added another two in his next outing. It's Chris Bushy of the Rochester Nighthawks coming up next right here on Lacrosse Classified on the Lax All-Stars Podcast Network. Serving the business and sports community since 2018, Extreme Threads provides custom design apparels around the world. Specializing in lacrosse, they deliver exceptional quality and service, customizing box and field team apparel and uniforms. Extreme Threads offers free design work and takes the time to ensure you get exactly what you need for your team or club. Contact Extreme Threads at sales at extremethreads.ca for your custom apparel needs today. This is John Tavares, and you're listening to Lacrosse Classified on the Lax All Star Podcast Network. All right, welcome back to Lacrosse Classified here on the Lax All Stars Podcast Network. Growing the game one podcast at a time is what we do here at LAS. Uh, thanks to Extreme Threads, you know the deal by now, fans. If your team signs up for an apparel package, I know we're just getting into kind of summer box lacrosse here. Teams need new jerseys, they need gear bags, they need jackets, t-shirts, practice pennies, what have you. Sign your team up for an apparel package with Extreme Threads. You mentioned my name and your coach, your manager, they get free stuff. Find them at Extreme Threads. Sign up at sales at extremethreads.com. They are our title sponsor. Make sure you're using them because, after all, every team needs to have a uniform, so why not use them? Now, join us here on the podcast. He went from being drafted by Saskatchewan to the Buffalo Bandits, then the Calgary Roughnecks, finally getting an opportunity here with the Rochester Nighthawks. And what does he do, Evan Schemenauer? Goes out and pumps in seven in his Nighthawk debut. It's Chris Bushy on the podcast. Chris, thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me. Well, it's been quite the journey for you getting to the National Lacrosse League Man, you uh, you go through Junior B, you you wind up in Junior A in kind of your fourth and fifth year. Then you get drafted to Saskatchewan. Things didn't work out there. Um, then Buffalo picks you up. Didn't quite work there. Then off to Calgary before being traded to Rochester. Just, I mean, was there ever a doubt, Chris, that you could play at this level? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, if I'm being if I'm being honest, I mean after after the after. Uh, Buffalo released me. That was kind of like a little bit of a. I was kind of shell shocked. I was like, yes, yeah, so that this might not be something that uh, that I could do. The dreams kind of over. I never thought about like hanging them up or anything. But I mean, definitely there was some doubt that creeped in there. 
but uh yeah i never really thought uh i never really thought it would take take i mean it's a dream of mine forever obviously to play professional cross but i didn't think it would i would be signing a, a putting pen to paper with four teams before my first year is up <laughs> <laughs> so give us your thoughts uh the Cal- Calgary, you actually did quite well. Unfortunately, Curtis Dixon gets signed. You find yourself as a healthy scratch most nights. And then you get traded to Rochester, which both Jumbo and I were scratching our heads about why you know you only, they only got a fourth-round pick for you because we're both such big fans of yours. Give us your thoughts on the trade and uh, everything that transpired. Um... I had a, a kind of a feeling something might happen just because of the fact that, you know, we had King still injured and he was coming back. And, uh, though, yeah, I went with Curtis signing and we obviously Tyler Pace and Reese Dutch uh, in front of me a little bit on the depth chart. I was getting scratched on. I was trying to figure out, like, who they were going to, were they going to drop me or were they going to put me to practice or move? There's had to be, I, I just knew there had to have been some sort of movement. So I was kind of preparing myself, and then, and uh, yeah, uh, Malowski called me um, in the morning, uh, one morning, and said yeah, I got traded to Rochester. And honestly, like it wasn't really a huge, uh, like it wasn't a sad moment. I mean, it's, it, it is difficult when you, you get to a team and you start, you know, really making ma- making a, an impact, kind of a name for yourself, and then you kind of get shipped off. And I was a little surprised by the fourth rounder, but. Uh, just based on the fact that I, I got drafted higher than that, <laughs> and uh, and I did have a pretty decent start um, to my rookie, uh, my rookie year with Calgary. But I mean, that's all something I can't really, you know, look into too much. It's just, oh, I, I just always have to try and look forward there, and I just to roll with the punches a little bit, and I was excited to get to Rochester. Yeah, I mean, does does that leave you with a bit of a chip on your shoulder, Chris? Uh, you know, going through what you've been through, Saskatchewan, Buffalo, Calgary, now Rochester, is that like, leave a bit of a chip like you want to prove people wrong and, yeah. and show them that you can do it at this level? Yeah, honestly, I, I think I'm running out of room on my shoulders for all the chips I got. I mean, <laughs> I got, I, I mean, my, my, before, ju- my, before my junior career even started, I was 16, like trying out for the Oakville Buzz, and before I even played a fir- my first game of junior B, I got shipped. I got shipped off for like a bag of balls to Mississauga, and like that, they are they're not uh, renowned for winning. So I mean, off the bat, it was just kind of like getting shoved down there, going to places, going to different teams, and then you know went to Halton, then went back to Burlington, then said, okay, I'm getting scratched. This isn't for me. I'm going back to Halton, and then ended up in a good spot in my fourth year junior with Burlington. I did pretty well, and then next year, obviously. But yeah, I mean, honestly, I think that's just. It's like that in any career, I guess, not even just sports. I mean, stuff happens, and you just got to take the good with the bad. And uh, learn to, it's really helped me learn to develop uh, and really stay true to to uh, my work ethic and, like, what makes me a special player and what separates me. Because I know, I, I know you can't go anywhere in sport and not believe in yourself, right? So no doubt. It just, it just kind of helped me out in that sense a little more that now I'm at – just help me believe in my in my skill set a little more, and just helps me that help that helped me drive forward a little bit. Well, clearly you believed in yourself on on Friday night uh, in Rochester as you took on the Georgia Swarm, and you pull on the purple and teal for the first time, Chris. And you know, there in Rochester, you're going to get a good shot. You're going to be taking a regular shift. You're going to be on the power play there, and you just kind of let it all hang out, and and you tied a, a record. Evan can back me up on this, but you tied a record for most points in a rookie debut with a new team, but you blew the goal total out of the water. I think the the next one was at five. You put up seven goals and two assists. Just, I mean, was it one of those games where you were just in the zone and felt like you couldn't miss? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> my my whole family came down and watched that game. My dad just started talking to me after the game, asking me, but like, you know, like, your parents do you like oh on this shift on this play on this play like what happened and I, I was just shaking my head like, I don't remember any of that like I, <laughs> so I, yeah it's one of those unconscious games I guess but getting there immediately I mean you got Cody Jamison like 
Cody Jameson and uh, and like Kyle Jackson, just like looking at you and saying, "Hey, listen, like shoot the ball," and like Austin Shanks too, just texted me before, like right when I got traded, like, "Dude, you're gonna get an opportunity to just you know do you kind of thing, like shoot the ball." And Jameson's uh, quote that I actually kind of revised in, a, in the interview, of which I don't remember taking actually um, during the game, shoot the shoot the ball first, and ask questions later. So that was kind of like the motto. <laughs> The model of, uh, of my game, which I guess it works, <laughs> but it was cool to get. You know, that was the first time I was actually getting my like a pat on the back, like get out there and go shoot the ball, not really go get out there and go go pick three guys and then come off. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was that was good for you know. me. Well, actually, I got to correct Jake a little bit. It wasn't just the rookie record; it was actually the all-time record in the NLL for any player on any team making their debut which is absolutely astounding. Yeah, and then give him the guys that he's in, in, in company with there, Evan, because it's a, it's a pretty fine list, I would say. Sean Williams, Daryl Veltman, I'm trying to remember, oh, Casey Powell is the other one. Yeah, that had those, nine those, guys, those guys. Those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But at any point in the game, do you, did you sit back and think, wow, I've got five, I've got six? Did any of this hit you at that time? Absolutely, yeah. I think after my, because that was actually uh, after my third, my third goal. That was that's my first, that's my first hat trick in the league too. So uh, I had a couple two goal games with Calgary, but I just couldn't get over that hump. And after I got my third one, I think that was still in the in the first half, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure. I, I think you it was had in the four end. in the opening half. Yeah, and it was four in the okay. So I. I had a, a hat trick in the first half, so I, I kind of knew at that point. It's like when you score a goal in your first possession, kind of thing. You're like, yeah. okay, it's going to be a night like that. Did any um, sock? Did any socks come flying when when you put number six up? I didn't get a chance to see it. No, I didn't, I didn't see that either. I, I don't know if anything like that happened. But I got to the bench, and the guys, as I'm like taking my water or whatever, like drinking my water, the guys are kind of like poking down my socks, rolling them down. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, so uh, Chris, you you go from. I mean, you're going to spend a little bit of time in Rochester there, but uh, I'm going to assume that you're going to be off to Halifax and play with the Thunderbirds next season. Um, just before we kind of came on air here, you mentioned that you got a couple of buddies back there, and, and it's quite the buzz, uh, the fact that the Halifax Thunderbirds are, are coming uh, to town. How excited are, are you about that opportunity? I think it's going to be really cool. Um, I mean, I, I, I like to compare it. To, I mean, it's not uh, – you think about North American, like, professional sports. Like, Halifax isn't really uh, off the top of someone's head. They're not going to say, oh, Halifax, that's going to be your ideal – um, market for a pro sport but then you take a look at like what what the rush has done in saskatoon you know where they have the rough riders they got a, a junior they got a chl team and then they got the rush right so i mean it's one of those things where it's like kind of less is more in a sense you, you have a, a, a city with not not that many uh pro teams if not none right so i think the buzz around the city what, what i've heard from my buddies that you know live in the area there that people just can't stop talking about it. They're just excited to, even if you're not a lacrosse fan, like they're excited to get some like uh, a professional sport. You know, they're excited to go down downtown on Saturday night and go watch like the best, the best of their uh, their kind do their thing. Right. So I think that's what the biggest buzz is about. And then obviously for the lacrosse nuts out there, that's it's just it's it's Christmas every time they they hear the the Thunderbirds name out there. Like be walking around, they're like kings. So I've been told. One of the interesting things I saw in a bio you actually did with the Roughnecks. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You were born in South Africa. Yeah. So you must definitely be the first South African in the league. Probably the first African in the league. How did this all come about? Like, what's the story behind this? Uh, I'll correct you on that. I'm not actually the only South African. The other South African guy in the league is Barkley on the, on the Nighthawks. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, he, he I I pretty sure he was born in Durban. If not, his parents are definitely lived their whole lives there cuz uh yeah, he's he he's uh he's definitely South African. I remember him talking about that with me in the summertime. I I I got called up for a game. He played for the Oakville Rock. I got called up for a game and he he started talking to me about that. But uh 
Yeah, I think he might be the only one. Well, hopefully uh, a few more South Africans pick up the game, and next time uh, the World Championships rolls around, South Africa can uh, be a part of the World Championships. Say, Chris, uh, we're short on time here on Extreme Threads Lacrosse Classified, but we really appreciate your time and and stopping by and kind of sharing your story a little bit here as a lot of people talking about Chris Boucher after that uh, that week you just had. I hope you you keep it going the rest of the year, and uh, best of luck with the rest of your career. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot for having me, guys. Uh, our pleasure, man. That was Chris Bushy of the Rochester Nighthawks, soon to be Halifax Thunderbirds. Uh, as it doesn't look like the Nighthawks are going to make the playoffs this year, Evan. But uh, a new, relooked, revamped team there in Rochester, and I know they went 0 one two on the weekend, but showed very well. And, and Chris Bushy was a big part of that. Oh, no doubt about it. And, and like I said before, when Chris was in Saskatchewan, I was disappointed there just wasn't a roster spot for him. I was very high up on him then. Uh, Kurt Malowski, when we interviewed him, was very uh, high up on him. We remained very high up on him for a good reason. He's got the talent. Yeah. Well, and there's, there's no question that, you know, he's going to Halifax at this stage. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I uh, mean, I know. think there's going to be more and more room for guys like Chris Boucher with expansion coming in. These type of guys – are going to get opportunities, and sometimes that's all it takes is you just need a real legit chance to show what you can do, and uh, Chris Bushy has made the most of it. we got to get to break, Evan Sheminar, because the people are waiting for the sensation that's sweeping the nation. It's Stampy Tax. Who you got on the other side? We're back after this here on Lacrosse All-Stars Podcast Network. Associated Labels and Packaging is in the business of creating first impressions. They'll help you reflect your company values accurately by offering solutions that fit your product needs. With the latest in printing technology and over 35 years of experience, Associated Labels and Packaging is the perfect fit for your company to take your labels and packaging to the next level. Hey, this is Jordy from Barstool Sports. You're listening to Lacrosse Classified on the Lax All-Stars Podcast Network. Welcome back to Lax Class Extreme Threats. Lacrosse Classified here on Lax All-Stars. Jake Elliott, Evan Sheminar with you. Uh, Big thanks to Rochester Nighthawk Chris Bushy for stopping by. Good chat there. But now, Evan Sheminer, oh, big thanks to our friends at Associated Labels and Packaging as well. They create first impressions. Find them online at associated-labels.com, social media at Associated LP. Sean Ashworth and the gang at Associated Labels and Packaging, they're the best. So make sure you're using their products. Sponsor, support our sponsors support the show that's how it works you support our sponsors you support the show it's one big happy family and it's a good family business there at associated labels and packaging as well and now evan schemenauer it's time for the sensation scraping the nation it's Tempe Tack. I don't know why I do Gertler's voice when I do that, but I do now. That's my new thing. Uh, <laughs> That's what I was thinking right away. It's, of course, I had a whole three hours of hearing that uh, this weekend. So. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that. I might have to get John Gertler to like do the intro for Stampy Tax. Who you got? Uh, by the way, Stampy Tack, they are your complete source for boots, hats, belts, jeans, and anything country. Don't forget... Find a picture of me, make it a flattering one if you can. There's not many out there, but if you dig deep enough, you can find a half-decent picture of me. Dress me up like a cowboy. Submit. What are they doing? Are they tweeting this out? Is that what they're doing? Tagging Stampede yeah, Tech? You, you uh, tweet tagging Lax Class or Instagram at Lacrosse Classified. And yeah, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see who pulls off the win on this one. All right. So put tag. Make sure you tag uh, Stampede Tack in there as well, so they yeah, see absolutely. it. Uh, we. I don't know who's going to be judging jury. I, I, we might as well let Stampede Tack, uh, the experts, decide who the winner <laughs> is. But uh, you, you Photoshop me wearing a, a cowboy outfit, and you can win yourself a, a prize from Blundstone. So that's a, that's a pretty good deal. That's added incentive there to make me look like an idiot. Um, anyways, it's time for Stampede Tech and Western Wear's Who You Got. Make sure you check them out at stampede.ca. Shopping online, still shopping local. Evan, we got seven 
games here in week 15. It is a monster week in the and National Cross League. Yeah, and I get to host. So here we go. Eight, and this is a toughie right out of the gates here. Eight and three, Toronto Rock at ten and four, Georgia Swarm. Evan, who you got? We said it earlier, teams in the East that are in the playoffs are 21 and five at home. Uh, there's not much to difference in these two teams for the simple reason that Georgia's at home. I'm taking the Swarm. Okay, I'm going to pass on this game until later. So let's move on here. Um... Uh, I'm just... Yeah, none of that, none of that, none of that. <laughs> Make your stance. Uh, let me, just hang on. I'm going to put my headset down. I'm going to grab a coin. Just hang on. All right. All right I'm back. I'm back. Uh, okay, I got a quarter here. Canadian quarter. Heads for the home team. Heads is the home team, so any pick I'm not certain on. I'm going with the coin now. That's a situation that we're in here, down four games. Here we go. Tails, it is. Give me the Toronto Rock. Mark it down. You got Georgia, I got Toronto. Next game up is 4-8 and eight against 4-8. and eight. This is a huge game here in the Western Division. Colorado at Vancouver. Evan, who you got? This is a tough one, and it's, it, I'm sitting here thinking, it's like, okay, is somebody going to win both? Because they're, they're playing a home and home. And like I said before, give me more of these home and homes. Please, I love them. But which one's going to come out on top first game? Take the home team, Vancouver. All right, take the home team, Vancouver. Uh, this is another pick I am just unsure about, and I've been on a bad losing streak. So, again, I'm trusting my trusty Canadian quarter here. Here goes the flip. And it's tails again. Give me the Colorado Mammoth. So, two games into differentiating picks so far here in who you got. Uh, next game up, another doozy. Man, is week 15 a good one. Six and five, Saskatchewan taking on seven and four, San Diego. Evan, who you got? And a real tough one to pick here. San Diego's done reasonably well at home, although they had that big hiccup against Vancouver. Saskatchewan coming off a tough loss, literally by a quarter of an inch. Do they lose another one on in a row? I don't think they do. I'm going to take the rush, and let's see if you actually pick against your team. Saskatchewan is going to have Adam shoot in goal. I think he's going to do okay. I think I think Scott Campbell is going to have a much better game than he had in that first one, too. I think there were some nerves there, believe it or not, for the 15-year veteran uh, stepping in for the first time. He's going to be better. I think Adam Schutt's going to be solid. This is a real important game. I know for both teams, I think more so for the rush. I'm not going to trust the coin in this one. I'm going to take Saskatchewan as well because at the end of the day, Evan, we both know they also give me a paycheck, and I'm not picking against them. Saskatchewan, I will take. Next up, New England. 7-5, and five, a chance to clinch a playoff spot at Philadelphia. Will Callum Crawford be in the lineup? Will he not be? Nobody knows yet. So, with all that being said, 7-5 and five against 2-10. and ten. Wings are at home. Evan, who you got? I'm going to assume that he isn't playing, um, even if it's a reduced suspension, he's not playing. Philly cannot play 60 minutes. Simple as that. Doesn't matter if they're on the road. Doesn't matter if they're at home. As much as New England is missing their top gun, I'm taking New England, and that would officially end the winged season. Well, with that being said, I don't think Philadelphia is quite ready to go away yet. Remember now, this is the new wings taking on the old wings. And I don't expect Callum Crawford to be in that game either. I'm still not exactly sure why New England started Alexis Bouquet in Vancouver after Doug Jameson has been so impressive over the last three games. I think they go back to Dougie, do the Black Wolves. But I think Philadelphia is just, they're at home. I think they're going to be sick of it, fed up of letting these games get away. And I think they find a way to win against the showtimeless New England Black Wolves. 
Give me the winks, Evan. Give me the winks. Mark it down. You got it down? Oh, I got it. Okay. Next up, maybe the game of the week. It could be Georgia at Toronto. could be the game of the week. This could also be the game of the week. San Diego at uh, Saskatchewan could be the game. There is a lot of good games this week. A lot of good games. Toronto at Buffalo. So the Rock could either be nine and three. They could be eight and four. Buffalo sitting there pretty at eleven and three. Evan, who you got? This is not an easy one either. Uh, I, I know who I'm going to pick. There's two reasons. Number one, Toronto's going to play on their second game of the weekend. They're going to be a little bit more tired. And let's go back to that stat: twenty-one and five at home. I'll take the Bandits. I think this is a real opportunity for Toronto. But that is a tough weekend there at Georgia. I already got Toronto in Georgia. I don't know if they can double dip, clean sweep the Swarm and the Bandits. That would be a heck of a weekend for the Rock if they were able to get two wins against those two teams. But I do feel like Buffalo was a little bit lucky to get out of Saskatchewan with the win. Is the coin coming out? Coin's coming out. Here we go. Oh, I dropped the coin, but it landed on tails. That means Toronto again. Give me the rock. Oh, you're going to have to have a lot of faith in that coin. Well, I mean, I don't have much faith in myself after the last couple of weeks, so who knows? We got we got four differentiating picks yeah. so far, and three of them the coin differentiated on. So well, so right there. Yeah. I mean, uh, we could be we could be tied, or we, or it could really just be over after this weekend. We'll see. Two more games to come, though. Here in Stampede Tax, who you got? Calgary goes all the way across the continent. Rochester, New York, six and seven Roughnecks against the two and ten Nighthawks. Evan, who you got? Uh, this isn't easy either. Like, but as much as Rochester is two and ten, they just played two amazing games, and they're at home. Uh, I'm still going to take the Roughnecks, and it's just that I think that now that you got some game tape on these guys, you can prepare for Rochester a little better. Calgary has got something to play for. Rochester, they're in a development stage. I'm taking the. I'm taking the Roughnecks. <laughs> you so tempt me just to take the Nighthawks here. Uh, but I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can do it. I think i got to take the Roughnecks as well. That way, at least I don't lose any more ground to you. Even if I think Rochester's fully capable of winning that game. I, I really do. I just... I can't... Ah, man. i got to take the Roughnecks. I'm taking the Roughnecks. Last game here, Evan. Uh, Vancouver at Colorado. The return half of the home and home here. Somebody's going to be five and eight. Somebody's going to be four and nine. Warriors at the Mammoth. Evan, who you got? It's rare that I could expect a team to sweep both ends of the home and home. I took Vancouver game one, so I'm taking Colorado at home game two. Well, I think Vancouver is going to lose their first game. I think they're going to be desperate enough to win in Colorado. So give me Vancouver. Give me Vancouver, Evan Shemanara. That is a lot of different picks that we got there. I think what? We both have Saskatchewan and we both have Calgary. Is that right? But the other five are all different. Okay. Well, somebody. I could be up nine games. Yeah. Or or you could be down <laughs> or one. down one. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, okay. That is Stampede Tax. Who you got? Should we recap it one more time here for the fans, Evan? Toronto at Georgia, got? you got you you recap it. I've been doing enough talking today. <laughs> I've got the swarm. You the coin has got Toronto. <laughs> I am the Vancouver. coin, though. I am the coin. Don't don't refer to <laughs> it as the coin. Colorado. I'm taking the Holmes Warriors. The coin's got Colorado. That's me. I'm the coin. The... I am the coin. <laughs> We're both taking the rush over San Diego. I've got New England on the road. You're taking Philly at home. Toronto Buffalo once again the coin decided on Toronto. I'm taking the I'm taking the Bandits. We're both taking the Roughnecks against Rochester, although we both are questioning that one. And at the tail end of the home and home, 
I've got Colorado, and you've got the Warriors. You know what we should do maybe for the playoffs, Evan, is we'll, I'll do a pick, you do a pick, and then the coin can do a pick and see who wins out of the three of us. Okay, I lost to the coin a few years ago. Yeah, so yeah I know. I'm a little afraid of that. Yeah, well, who knows? Uh, what else we got before we get you on your way here? Uh, how did the broadcasting debut go? I'm pleased with it. I, I know I screwed up a few times. Not to, it's more of a I'm think trying to think what I'm trying to say, and it's all of a sudden blank for a few seconds. But uh, you know, when you got a broadcast partner like Gertler, who you know does the play by play so well, and then it just it was easy to fill the holes. You know, tell people you know try and describe the goals to people. Uh, it was fun, and actually, this is one thing that I think the rush need to do because they don't do it. Buffalo does it is a full 30-minute pregame show. And I love talking all aspects of the game for 30 straight minutes. I think the Rush should look at doing that as well. Well, I'll bring uh, I'll bring that up to Dave Thomas. Uh, he might ask for a raise if, uh, if he has to do that. But um, I don't think that's the worst idea ever. Um, so that's good news. I know you got some bad news uh, coming from your other job as well. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, and... I hope I wasn't doing this with a heavy heart, to, but luckily this podcast is a bit of a distraction. Uh, one of my staff members, Antonio Lara, uh, passed away this afternoon. Uh, complications from her pregnancy. So uh, my condolences to the family, to her husband, Jonathan. Um, this is a tough loss. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a struggle this week to get through it. Yeah, well, I'm I'm real sorry to hear that. And uh, you know, if there's there's anybody out there listening, um, you know, there's there's help for you out there. Don't be don't be afraid to pick up a phone and, and ask for some help if if you need it uh, when you're going through a tough time. Um, BC Junior A lacrosse schedule got released. The season will begin April the 26th. So just over a month from now and box the cross summer ball uh on the horizon which is which is always nice um our buddy from lacrosse flash tyson geik was down in san diego with colton clark former nlller uh those guys are good buddies back from their junior days they went down to san diego for a number of reasons but one of them was uh they put a bet on that philadelphia san diego game evan i don't know if you saw this or not but uh yeah tyson (laughs) had philadelphia colton had san diego the bet was or is whoever lost the other guy gets to pick a tattoo to put on his body can you believe this i mean what is tyson what is tyson gonna do this before i've heard about this before in fantasy football pools where the last place guy gets a tattoo from the first one but on a lacrosse game that's gonna be interesting you know we've we've been messaging tyson trying to find out what the heck this tattoo is and more importantly where it's located and he's been silent yeah so this has got to be something a little embarrassing if he's managed to you know keep that tight-lipped about it well we were going to try and get him on the podcast here because i got a bit of a bone to pick with him too he said in and out burger is way overrated which uh almost made me like oh. un- unfriend him on social media over that Slap uh, him across the back of the head yeah the heck's yeah so him? i don't i don't know what's going on there but uh he's obviously a little offside because he's now got to get a tattoo and he thinks in and out burger is overrated, so I don't know what's going on with Tyson. Uh, he may need to be shook around a little bit. You know what would be good is if he got like a tattoo of of Patty Gregoire with a cigarette coming out of his mouth uh, <laughs> and get smoking Patty. Well, we were we were we were guessing uh, things like the the seals logo on the butt cheek or something yeah, like that. Just, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Somebody in our chat group said Bill O'Brien. <laughs> so uh shout out to thrilla nation uh that would be something if if the we'll have to we'll keep you posted on what tyson comes up with with a tattoo maybe we'll get him on the show after he gets that tattoo and uh he can let us know and then we'll have it out over in and out burger as well so that'll be it here on extreme threads lacrosse classified speaking of extreme threads thanks once again to our sponsors 
Associate Labels and Packaging, Pure Vital Labs, Stampede Tack and Western Wear, and our title sponsor, Extreme Threads. Uh, all right, thanks to Randy Stats and Chris Bushy for stopping by, and to you, of course, the loyal listener, for listening to Lacrosse Classified every single Tuesday right here at Lax All Stars. Make sure you subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify. Subscribe on them all. I highly suggest you do that. No, you can just do one, and then it's right in your phone. You don't have to worry about it. It's right there every single week. Uh, Social media, I am at PXP for sports. Evan is at Shemlax, and the show is at Lax Class. That's a good way to follow along as well throughout the week, and uh, then you don't miss anything either. All right, that's it uh, for the fastest game on two feet and for the creator. We'll talk to you next time here on Extreme Threads Lacrosse Classified on the Lacrosse All-Stars Podcast Network.